Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, this edition of Discussing Digital. Uh, today, I'm discussing digital with uh, Steve O'Neill of SON Development. Uh, hi, Steve. Could you uh, start off by giving us a little bit of an overview of what SON Development does? Hi, Rob. Um, do you know what? That is always a difficult question. And we like when we do networking stuff and people say, yeah, what do you do? It's really quite hard because SON Development is sort of it's become a hybrid, really, of all the things that I've done in my career. So my career has been primarily um, operational management and leadership, learning and development, and a bit of audio stuff as well, which I'll come on to in a minute. So SON development kind of covers those three areas. So um, primarily it's about skills development. So um, I deliver training, um, workshops for organizations, teams, individuals, um, mainly on subjects that I um i've either had success with or, or have a lot of experience of so it's leadership management coaching sales service all, all those sorts of things um and then um so that's the kind of the, the one strand the second strand is i work as a learning consultant so i spend time with organizations um talking with them about their learning and development success um and i either run workshops for them or i give them advice on train the trainer um embedding all that kind of stuff and then the third weird part of it is the audio side because um i got into uh, i actually started off as a professional voiceover artist and um uh, that was uh, 11 years ago and i did it for a year and a half um i've got my own sound booth just there um and um and i learned about voiceover work and then got into kind of tended to specialize in e-learning because that's the area that I, I I knew um and then went from there to doing a podcast and my podcast now has been going since 2017 um and that's kind of morphed into everything from podcast production to again audio consultant I was on the phone yesterday to someone talking about their audio on their videos and how they can make their audio better and, and that kind of stuff um and also um uh podcast production as well so i i not only have my own podcast i produce podcasts for other people and there's a very there's a very loose connection between the kind of the learning stuff and and, and the audio stuff because a lot of it is for for, for um for podcasting or, or e-learning but um yeah they're the three strands skills development training consultant audio Try and say that in 60 seconds in a <laughs> network meeting yeah i think you may have failed <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the first time won't be the last time yeah um and it's been quite interesting to maybe explore and come to talk about digital marketing as we go through this how you yeah. find different ways of of marketing those different uh, aspects of your business mm -hmm. um so we'll ask you to so obviously you mentioned podcasting there and i will just say that actually steve has helped me immensely in getting discussing digital the podcasting part of it actually okay. out onto the onto the podcasting into the podcasting world um and uh he's probably fed up with me suddenly so keep posting going ha ah, we're on spotify now and ah, we're on apple <laughs> apple uh podcast no, i love it so. i love it i love it <laughs> I, lo I love I, the, the thing i love most is helping people get better at what they do that's that's yeah. the golden thread through everything i do and i love it when people when i can share something with someone that helps them get better at something and they then go off then and have their own success it's fantastic so yeah. you could post about that every day and and uh it would cheer me up brilliant that's good to know because i will <laughs> <laughs> so uh apart from that description so so let's talk a bit about how you do uh use digital marketing to actually promote the, your different aspects of your business because i know when i approached you you kind of went i don't do digital marketing um and then the next day you posted things like a, a video of you doing an interview with uh so the, the creator of the coaching process that you do yeah, so there was a post on linkedin with a link yeah. to a, a five a really well produced five minute video on youtube so yeah. i kind of went liar liar pants are on fire you do do digital <laughs> marketing <laughs> well it's funny because you're you're the talking to you and by the way this is the first video podcast i've ever been on so i've done my hair and my makeup and everything rob um better than i have <laughs> i uh normally i'm just doing voice stuff and then uh, i'm usually uh pay less attention to that but um your this interaction with you it's kind of the first time i've realized oh actually maybe i do do digital marketing i didn't think i did um but but in that sort of um 
pre-conversation chat we've had and, and where you asked me to list where I am, I thought I'm putting quite a lot of different websites on this bit of paper. Yeah, diff- <laughs> different websites, most social media platforms. Yeah. You know, yeah. So and, and podcasting. So yeah. And and part of the challenge has come from um so essentially before I set the business up, um, just coming up for three years ago now. Um, I had the podcast website and the and all of the streams that went with the podcast. So there was there was a website, there was um, a Twitter channel, there was a Facebook page, there was a YouTube channel. Um, then I had the voiceover side of the business. Voiceover had its own website, had its own Twitter channel, still does, um, had its own YouTube channel. And then when I set up the business and um, – within SON development, I wanted to incorporate those other things. What I ended up doing was creating one website, which had different pages. Um, so I've got a page on the website for podcasting, a page on the website for audio production, um, and the main page for skills development. But I thought I'll probably keep these channels live and keep them going because they've built, some of them have got like, you know, five, 6,000 subscribers. Yeah. So I might as well, keep it live it didn't make sense to shut them down um and actually the challenge for me is is using them in a way that adds value to the audience but doesn't take up all of my time um so i've kind of got into a bit of routine now where i'll tend to use linkedin and instagram mainly for the sort of the front part of the business um when i when i produce podcasts of my own or other people i'll share that on twitter and also on uh, Facebook, um, and I've recently started sharing that also on LinkedIn and um, uh, and Instagram as well. Because for a long time, I was producing podcasts, doing voiceover in the background of my main job, so it wasn't you know it wasn't sort of front and center. It was if you like, it was a a, a, a sideline. Um, so it's been really difficult actually, kind of putting it all together and coming up with a way of 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 promoting those different parts of the business or sharing those different parts of the business um, without just spamming people and yeah. talking about I'm, me, me, me. Like. Yeah. But, but a, a lot of it is about, uh, yeah, just, well, not it is about me, 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 but you know, that's part of what digital marketing is about. You are actually promoting yourself, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's a way of doing it in a way that triggers um, other uh, other people so one it helps inform what you're doing but also gets them involved um and i i I think it's probably quite a good time to talk about before we started the recording uh we were talking about a a linkedin post that you said actually is one of your most successful where you had shared um an event that you've been doing or a training course you've been doing and tagged people in it and that has actually helped change the way you do um posts so do you maybe want to talk a bit more about that yeah, so um, so last year I did some work um, with Royal Sun Alliance, um, who I'm actually back again with with next month, um, doing some of the coaching work. So this is where we um, we train trainers to deliver this coaching training within the organisation, and um, and in that in the early part of that train the trainer stuff, um, I was taking some photos and got there. Um, got their marketing team's permission to share on on, on socials, and um, and I did a kind of compilation one. At, I think it was at the end of a week where I was saying, you know, I've worked with all these amazing people, and this is a great organisation to be part of. And that is heartfelt. I don't do it in a cynical way. You know, it's a trick or it's clever. I genuinely feel excited about spending time with the people I spend time with, and and I really want to showcase them. But what seemed to happen with this particular post is that because I tagged a lot of people in it. And because I was kind of showcasing um, other people's success, it seemed to grow arms and legs and 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 they were resharing it and so on. And I thought, well, actually, maybe maybe there's something in this. And um, and so I tend to um, particularly in my end of week review, which which we've talked about before on a Saturday or Sunday um, uh, or if I'm with other people like PBE or Spark or LinkedIn Local. For me, what's important is to showcase the other people and tag them in it and share their success. Um, and I think that then drives interaction. Whereas it was just me saying, Hi, I'm Steve from Messaman Development. This is my business and this is what I do. And if I just did that all, and there is some of that. In fact, this week I've got a run of um 
post where I'm just blatantly promoting the business. This is this is what we do at SON Development. These are the services we provide. Here's a video about it. Um, but but that tends to be in the minority. And, and what I've discovered is that by focusing mainly on other people and sharing and showcasing other people, a it makes people feel good, and I like making people feel good. That's a key part of what I do. Um, it showcases their success and it drives a bit of interaction. And for me, interaction is 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 the key. You can have five thousand connections on LinkedIn, but if you're not getting interaction and you're not interacting with real people, to me, it's just a number and it's a yeah. bit of a waste of time, really. Yeah, absolutely. And and also the LinkedIn algorithm likes to see posts that do trigger interaction because that okay demonstrates that what you are doing is of interest to people. So so That's yeah, there's one level is the um you know, the, the whole way you do like love and all that and sort of congratulate and, and celebrate and that sort yeah. of thing on LinkedIn. Um, and then even more powerful is if you can get somebody to put a, com- a comment on and then you can start a conversation that that really does help to boost yeah, yeah, um, things. Yeah. And yeah. I I did see somebody, uh, somebody else had put a, um, a post together with one of those carousel posts on there that was talking about how the algorithm almost gives those scores and values um, okay. And it's quite interesting some of the stuff that it says, and it's you know that when they are saying and they've done research on it, I, I don't know how true. Actually, it's like the the speed of response as well. So if somebody starts commenting on it within an hour or something like that, that helps right. boost it up. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. But one of the dangers is that some people set up what well, they. I don't know if you've seen this where people talk about being members of pods, and a pod is like a group of people that always go and comment on each other's. Posts. Oh right, okay. I've um, heard of and, this. And, and that can kind of, uh, if, if, if it's, and it's an interesting thing, a difference between pods. And if you're in a networking group, when everyone's yeah. like all connected, so you do often quite often connect on to, to, to people. So, um, yeah, pods is something that some people might, some people go, it's frowned upon because you're like falsifying it. But in the situation that, that you've just described, and it's what I do as well, weekly roundup, tag people you've met that week. And then that starts that conversation. It, you know, it simply things like, yeah, it was a good meeting, wasn't it? Or, you know, yeah, nice, yeah. To, nice to have a chat with you, nice to get to know what you've been doing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I it, mean, is, is really a useful way of doing it and, and really powerful. What you've said there about pods is, is interesting, actually, because I've been hearing a lot this week about big YouTubers, um, not big YouTubers, YouTubers <laughs> who are successful, um, have suddenly losing loads of money because the, um, the AdSense algorithm is saying that um you've got you 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 you've got a false audience yeah and um and there are some clauses in there and it, it it's what you've just described actually that actually the, the, the what they say is that if you create groups of people who go on and like your thing and share it and they're not properly in, they're not genuinely interacting with it they're just doing it to boost numbers then we'll cut your revenue yeah. and apparently the adsense thing has made a mistake and some of these massive youtubers have lost like 90 percent of their ad revenue um and it and it and that what you've just said there actually makes sense that i guess if you're falsifying your figures um yeah it's understandable <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and that's what all those algorithms are, are about really they, they're always just trying to make sure that what you see is what you want to see you know yeah. um and, and they are constantly refining it because sometimes they are constantly people sort of trying to to find ways to to break it i, I mean yeah. um i mean a few years ago you know, we talked about about sort of google there you mentioned youtube obviously google own youtube yeah. but a few years ago people realized that the way to spoof onto uh high rankings on on google was to have hundreds of links right? and it didn't really okay. matter what the quality of those links were or or the relevance of them so people right. were setting up link directories um just to to boost their their posts and Google realized that because they could see suddenly when they were presenting a set of results, people were going to the top website and not staying there because it wasn't good quality. And so, okay. yeah, that's what they're all about. It's trying to improve, improve, improve the quality. Do they always get it right? No. But are they always trying to refine it? Yes. So, yeah. And I mean, for those of us that don't actually make money from from subscribers or ads, to me, it's just all all vanity. I mean, I've got, I'll have a look. I can't. I can't remember how many connections I've got on Twitter. Um, let's have a look and see on my Sharp Podcast account. 
uh, at Sharp Podcast. So I've got 5,488 followers. I I hardly get any interaction from people anymore because I don't I, I I don't interact with it anymore. Yeah, I, I'll put a podcast up, but I've kind of given up on on the world of Twitter. I've almost thought about taking it down recently, but I thought, well, I'll leave it there. You know, it's it, the, the content's there and so on. But I'm not I'm not active on it. So those five and a half thousand followers probably don't even know they're following me. But you know, on LinkedIn, I've got probably maybe between 50 to 100 people who I regularly get interaction with and share and, you know, you and 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 Penny and PBE and, you know, lots of new recent additions to that as well. And for me, that's that's what's more important, genuine interaction with people and, and you know, g- genuinely um, showcasing what what people do and what we do, because the numbers don't mean anything, really. I, I don't think. No, 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 I agree, and and also, uh, I, 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 it's interesting what you were saying there, because, um, it, you know, yes, there, there's nothing wrong with being on all the different platforms, and look, I've got, I, I could do this now, uh, all the different sort of like oh, yeah. different ones I've, I, I've, I've got there as a kind it's of here on my screen. Is it? Yeah. Am I pointing to it? No. <laughs> yeah, sort of over there, but actually, we've swapped round. So, so you're just pointing to. <laughs> it's one of those wonderful things about how the different screens present. Yeah. Um, so obviously as a digital marketer, I, I I am on all of them, but 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 in, in my way or another, and and uh, TikTok's a slight lie. I'm actually that's my my goal this month is to get my myself up and running on okay. TikTok. Um, but yeah, as you say, you know, Twitter. I, I've, I yeah, I've got five thousand plus followers, but I don't get I get very little interaction. I just put yeah. stuff on there, and, yeah. and the truth is, it is much better to do one social media channel well than try right. and do all of them badly, if that okay. makes sense. Um, you know, and, and I quite often say, when, certainly when people are starting out, it's better to do the one you like most, right? right. Because okay. uh, a lot of people go, you know, certainly if you're first starting off as a business owner, you go, oh, I don't really do social media. I don't like yeah. it. And you go, well, which one do you like the best? And they might go Facebook, depending on what they are, or Instagram. And you go, well, look, just do that because... Mm-hmm. Mm. There's hundreds of millions of users on all of them, right? And so, therefore, you are likely to be able to find a group of people that are your potential customers or are interested yeah. in what you're doing on any of yeah. them. Yes, yeah. there are things like, you know, LinkedIn is much more of a business-to-business platform. Facebook does tend to go for, you know, it tends to be the the, the slightly older social media people users. Instagram is is that slightly you know, younger than and TikTok is like my grandson, yeah. <laughs> but actually, TikTok's growing. This is being used all over the place. So I don't want to yeah, like yeah. malign it as a yeah. platform uh, at all. Um, but yeah. it's you know just do just do one, do it well. Yeah, you know, and, and like I said, and, uh, sorry, and I think that also to me, what's important is thinking about why are you doing it because um, I was <clears throat> I was never really never really a fan of facebook to be honest with you um most of my business is to other businesses i don't sell to individuals i mean i've got the clear course coming up which i'll be selling to to individuals so um that might change things but certainly for the last couple of years all of my clients are businesses so linkedin feels like the right place to be to yeah. to showcase a training organization yeah. um and it was the same with voiceover. Individuals don't commission you to do voiceovers. They're all production houses and, and you know, that kind of stuff. So, again, that they were often businesses. And I did have a voiceover LinkedIn account. I had two separate LinkedIn accounts at one point. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I found that the common thread in everything I do, whether it's doing voiceovers, podcasts, training or whatever, it's always thinking about who is the audience and narrowing it down to one person. Yeah. And kind of, you know, thinking, who is that one person I'm connecting with? What does that one person need to hear? And it's interesting when you do voiceover, because you might have seen me put some posts up recently with Julia, my dummy's head in the booth. Um, but for the uninitiated, what that is, is when you're doing voiceovers, if we're talking like you and I are talking now, it sounds natural because I'm talking to a human being. Um if there isn't a human being in front of me and I'm reading from a script, it's actually quite hard to make that feel natural if you're not talking to another human being. And bizarrely, and I stole this idea from someone else, I can't remember who, I think it was um, uh, Mike Del Gordio, the booth junkie, there's a, there's a name, uh, is have a 
picture of someone in front of you and talk to the picture of a person. And it's really weird because you, the neuroscience changes things and suddenly your conversation becomes conversational and that's why Julia's yeah. head's there. But it's the same with training. It's the same with all of my my posts. I kind of, I want to, I want to think about who is the one person that's seeing this and what message am I trying to get across to them? Yeah, no, and, that, and that, I tell you what, that's a really good tip to have a dummy or something like that. And, and it's brought back memories. I, I did um, some training uh, with uh, quite a famous coach guy called Peter Thompson. Uh, and when I signed up for doing stuff with him, part of his starter kit that he sent you was one of those kind of um, artist dummies, sort of those wooden model things. Um, and he said, put that on your desk and talk to that. Um, yeah. Now, now I haven't yeah. got that, yeah. but actually I do have. So my granddaughter made me a little Lego model, right, of um, me. Uh, so it's me with shades on and a baseball cap. That's why I always wear when we're out and about. And that does sit on my desk. So uh, yeah, I can talk. I can talk to my little Lego model. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but it, it does work. It does. It does switch your mindset from talking to a camera or a microphone to actually you're talking to something. It does. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm quite yeah, conscious of, of, of time. Really bizarre. Of, of where we're at. A couple of things I wanted to talk about, a little bit more about, okay. about your podcasting, because obviously you did help me tremendously. Um, and also you did kind of show me... Yeah. Did you say you had something like 35 different microphones? Uh, 18. 18. 18. All right, yeah. Actual but, microphones. It's quite a significant uh, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a lot. I love audio. Yeah, but it, but interestingly, it is important to have the right equipment, isn't it? So maybe we can talk. Yeah, I think that, that, that'd be quite good for people to understand that it's important to have. Good well, it, it is, and certainly from an audio perspective, um, every situation demands a different kind of microphone, or if you, if you want good quality audio, um, a different approach. And what I've learned over the years, having gone from just having one microphone in a booth to having everything from boom mics to radio mics to condensers, dynamics, you know, there's all sorts of different kinds of, of microphone. Depending on what you want to do with it, um, there's, there's a different microphone for, for a different every different scenario. And um, one of the things that really frustrates me about, and podcasts in particular, because not so much this kind, because this is video, but audio podcasts, people that make audio podcasts don't think about their audio. Now, I fully appreciate you don't know what you don't know, but the information is out there and you can go on YouTube, you can go you know, online and you can find out about stuff. And there are some very simple, basic things people can do. Get the microphone as close to the mouth of the person that's speaking. Number one rule, you know, the, if you're recording a camera that's in a distance and you're using the mic in the camera and the camera's far away, it will sound far away and it won't sound great. If you're talking into a computer and the microphone's on the screen and it's quite far away from you, it, it will sound far away. And the further away the microphone is from the mouth, the more it will pick up the ambience of the room noise, and that then will interfere with the quality of the audio. Now, I'm not suggesting people need to go pro audio level, but there are a, a simple two or three things people can have a think about that, that would make it better. And George Lucas said that audio is 50% of the film-going experience. Mm. Um, and if you've seen... Saving Private Ryan or anything like that, you know, you know how powerful that or the the music endures. Um, so I am quite passionate about audio and um, and I like helping people and I like helping people, you know, sound good because psychologically, particularly if you're promoting a business, you want to come across as professional and you want people to see that you're you're serious about what you do. And if um, you sound like this all the time you're talking or the there's loads of echo in the room and that kind of subconsciously people are thinking oh, this this doesn't feel like good quality yeah well let's hope the quality the audio quality of my end is all right then <laughs> sounds good <laughs> sounds good to me actually yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay That's cool uh, i am conscious of time uh so what okay. uh, there are a couple of questions i always like to ask uh guests uh on on this um and that is to give a tip one good one tip of one good thing for people to do for their digital marketing and one bad thing so things they should never do that, you, that you've found out through experience so uh, what's your one good thing um my one good thing i think is think about mixing it up um so i i tend to do um kind of rule of three, I tend to do a sort of a, 
an, an info post about a subject that might be interesting to people. So, you know, here's the latest article on problems with management or, uh, you, you know, talking about um, uh, 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 learning skills or AI or chat GPT or whatever it is. So, so, so one post that's kind of got something that might be interesting to your potential customers or other people, one post that's quite personal and sort of bloggy or vloggy. So it's about my world. And then one post, which is just a direct transmission this is my business and this is the service i do so i try to mix it up um and i think mixing it up means that people will they're not seeing the same thing all the time and and you know when your posts come up in their feed they'll find it interesting so that's the one thing i think i do okay with. yeah no that's good and it's a very very good tip as well actually and what about okay. the one thing don't do that just don't do it um Probably everything else I do. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think, I think probably from our conversation, the one thing is don't chase numbers. Um, actually, if you care about people and you do stuff in a heartfelt way that genuinely wants to connect with people, if that's your mission for for your your social marketing, then I believe good will come out of it. Not in a sort of woo spiritual way. I mean, like literally, good, good will come out of it if you do stuff with good heart and good intent. If you do stuff cynically where well, you just want to chase numbers and you think I'm going to trick the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. And, and if that's your your MO to chase numbers and so on, um, to me, that's not only quite shallow, it's kind of pointless, really. Um, yeah. And I'm my, my kind of personal passion area is productivity and, and, and you know, managing your 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 attention and your focus. And that's what the, the clear course that's coming out is, is all about. Um, and an important thing is to make sure you're spending the right amount of time on on something and, and not too much time on it. And I think um, if you go chasing numbers, you that you you could end up, you know, just constantly online. And at the end of the day, we have got a life that isn't online. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So mix it up. Good thing. Bad thing. Don't chase numbers and don't be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Perfect. Excellent. Um. Now we will put all the all the links uh, to all your different um, channels and everything in the show notes. Um, okay. But if people wanted to get in contact with you, what's the easiest and best way for them to do it? Um, so uh, if you go to my website, sondevelopment.com, um, my contact details are there. Um, you can you've, there's links there from there to LinkedIn and um, Instagram. Um, I'm on uh, I'm on uh, YouTube, so it's son development 111 so you can find me on there on youtube um and uh you can get to all the other places via the website but um uh, yeah sondevelopment.com and obviously i'm in linkedin so if you just search steve o'neill and as long as you avoid the baseball player and the guitarist true story um you might find me yeah no excellent and saying that i, I mean it, I, I confused myself so there's a rob osborne um on linkedin who is actually a news presenter in wales um oh, and wow. he, yeah and he tends he tends to hit um slightly higher um it, always if you google rob osman he comes up first which annoys me <laughs> a, a little bit sorry rob um but we have actually connected on linkedin um and i did point just at, at um because i noticed for whatever reason that he didn't personalize his, his url so I, I shared with him and it confuses uh -huh. me sometimes when i suddenly get rob osborne has liked your post it's like Oh, that's me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no it's that other rob <laughs> i was annoyed because the musician has got steve so ah. uh, uh that's why i've had to go steve o voice or so in development and all that kind of stuff yeah but, um yeah, yeah brilliant cool. all right well thank you so much for being guest uh on on this episode and uh i really hope uh, everyone has found it interesting all right so brilliant me too, me too.